Thank you so much, Angus, for uh, hosting this evening and uh, for Oricon for being wonderful core members throughout this project. Tonight is the first of a national rollout of launches of this particular project. So these organisations nationally are those that provide the wherewithal to do industry, government, research across the country. We're a truly national group having grown out of the CRC for construction innovation and we are here to serve industry. We do 18 month projects, we call that the sweet spot. We take some of the best ideas out of the longer term research and we turn that into industry driven research that takes the concepts into practice ideas into case studies and that's what you'll hear about tonight. This started out being a study to see how we could do this integration of transit systems with land development and finance. You know this is a technology we've just come across. It had this sense of being about the next generation of transport. It made it possible to do what we've been talking about. So we've produced a guide and it is now moving into an, the next project which is to put it to pr into practice in certain places including Clara the high-speed rail people who want to build a country town with 200,000 people in it and use the trackless tram there we've got Fisherman's Bend in Melbourne we've got uh, Liverpool Council in Sydney and three or four others lining up um, and and a number of local governments in Perth that, that are still talking about this so it's, it's ongoing, and Townsville and Hobart. Hobart's writing it into their city deal. And you'd have to say thank you to the industry people who helped us do it, because these opportunities don't come along that often uh, for academics to be part of. And uh, certainly Oricon have been very important to do this. SBE, certainly with their demand-led research, has, has, has been very good at, at, at enabling us to, to go on this journey because we didn't quite know where it was leading. The various local governments that have been partnering with us, Stirling, Vincent, the City of Perth, uh, Vic Park and Canning, Canning especially have been very helpful. Every SBE project is led by an industry chair. The industry chair is an influential and independent chair uh, outside of the project research team and that's the model that we use and reinforce time and again that the chair's role is one of independence and, uh, and industry uh, leadership and we thank David for taking on that role. But what this project did, and, and Keith it was the benefit of having 18 months to think it through, was we actually said this is more than capturing value to eliminate externalities. And what, we've, what this project is also about is trying to link the benefits and costs so closely that they're handled in the one institute, the one organisation. Now, we don't do that at the moment because we don't have governance structures for keeping it in-house. So what we tried to do with this project is think about ways of keeping those benefits and those costs in-house. This is not easy to do. It requires new governance structures that we're not very good at. We don't know how to do them. I don't think there's a, many successful examples uh, there's one in Sydney where the developer built a piece of transport infrastructure, the Bill Burge, uh, Bennelong Bridge, I think. But that's, that's rare that a developer controls that much land. What we need are governance structures that work where the de developers don't control that much land and the government doesn't control that much land. But we have to cooperate together <coughs> so that the developers <coughs> are, are, are getting enough of the benefits of the improved design to be able to pay for at least the station, preferably a portion of the, the route between the station. If your transit system is much cheaper to build, it becomes much easier to integrate the benefits and the costs in the one entity. It starts out trying to say, how do we bring land development around stations into the mainstream process of building transit? And then we saw that one of the key things is that if you get private sector developers involved from the start, not at the end, from the start, to help define where is the best potential for land, how can we make the urban regeneration pay for it, then you're likely to get the integration happening because they will deliver it at the same time as the transit. And that's a question of how you procure it and make it happen. Then we 
got into the trackless tram because it enables it to happen because it's cheap enough to do it. It's it's a tenth of the cost of light rail. I see two two aspects here. I see some technology that could be really useful to us in the future, um, something that you know we could learn from the lessons of. I see options for us to consider financing either partly or wholly uh, in, in the future. So that's the way I see. It. From a, I guess a city of Canning or local government perspective. Um, We've purposefully, for our Canning City Centre, we're accommodating 25,000 extra people in that centre. We took the decision pretty early on to, I guess, future-proof our main street, and you know, some, some critics said that that made the street too wide, but we essentially accommodated uh, the trackless tram or, or a rapid bus transport option and built that into our city centre to accommodate um, you know, the future population growth that we're envisaging. We're doing some work in the Victoria at the moment, which will probably end up in uh, a, uh, a change in legislation to put new legislative in instruments in place because basically we don't have methods at the moment that work very well so it's probably new legislative instruments. There are a number of mechanisms and we say that the best two um, uh, have more <coughs> private sector involvement than government uh, in order to procure it in a way that involves the private sector from the start. And the, it's a partnership process, so you get three levels of government, you get the private sector, you get local um, community groups involved. But you, you do it in a way that sets up some kind of body, we call it a consortium <coughs> of some kind. The other thing to consider is that if, if you do this and you actually do build a lot more in the area that's more central and available on the tram or the train, it doesn't mean that, and it might be more expensive as David is saying, but you save considerably in terms of your transport costs in general and the numbers on that are very powerful. And the benefit cost ratios, if you compare that to, to, to building on the fringe, it's something like seven to one, you know, it's just extraordinary <coughs> the time savings that people have if they're living more centrally. So that's what we're doing, is enabling more people to live in that sort of situation. It's not necessarily that the people who live there now are going to have some great value that they capture by being near it. Um, it's the people who you can bring in, and that's what we need in this city.